From a science graduate to a teenage National Geographic fan, everybody has heard of astronomical events like supernova, black holes, going back in time, moving past the speed of light like Superman, etc. The common basis among all of them is science fiction. Whether it's a book or a movie, science fiction right from H.G. Wells' The Time Machine to Avengers going back in time to collect infinity stones, we have lived the moments and experienced the phenomenon like parallel worlds that emerges from the deep underlying complicated theories of science. One such marvel of the sci-fi genre is 2014 Christopher Nolan's movie Interstellar. It was not just a movie, but one of the most scientifically correct picturized events on cinema screen. Kip Thorne, the American physicist and Nobel Prize winner, was the main scientific brain behind this movie and had only one request with director Christopher Nolan that no event in the movie would be scientifically inaccurate. It was definitely a gift for science lovers. But the physics behind multiple scenes can puzzle anyone. What are those theories behind the unforgettable scenes in the interstellar? Let's relive them again. My name is Siddharth and you are watching The World of Science. Movie starts in a dystopian future where huge dust storms have been wreaking havoc, humanity is dying, everything is monotonous. Cooper, the main protagonist, an ex-engineer and NASA pilot, is now farming with his family. His daughter Murphy, while learning Morse code, is trying to solve the mystery of strange dust patterns in her bedroom floor. Cooper deduces them and they somehow represent a binary code giving coordinates to a secret NASA base. Reaching there, they find out about a big wormhole present near Saturn through which NASA had sent astronauts to search for Earth-like planets in order to save humanity. Cooper is asked to go on such a trip and the story goes on. Kip Thorne was a close friend of Stephen Hawking and Carl Sagan. In the late 1900s, he was working on a theory to make a traversable wormhole so that an object could enter and move through space and time without breaking laws of physics. Wormhole like black hole is not a naturally occurring object and that is why when the NASA team in the movie got to know about the presence of the wormhole, they reached the conclusion that someone had built it there. They must have been a more advanced civilization than us because we are still very far behind manipulating the force of gravity. Wormhole is basically a bridge between two portions of space and time. Each end of the wormhole is called the mouth and the pathway connecting the two is called the throat. Each mouth can be made to experience different measurements of space and time by placing it near some heavy object or moving it near the speed of light. For example, if one end of the wormhole is placed near a black hole and one end near Earth, then the mouth near the black hole will experience time much slower than the mouth near Earth. And this difference of time and also space is utilized for traveling through time or through a large distance more swiftly. Since a wormhole is a bridge between four-dimensional space-time, it is also a four-dimensional structure. We can understand the concept of a wormhole through the analogy of paper and pen. We can pierce two holes in paper and fold the paper to show that the distance has been reduced. But that is just a generalization and the real structure of the wormhole is actually four-dimensional. In the movie, we can see that the wormhole is not shown as a pipe-like hole but a spherical hole. This wormhole was placed by them to reach a very distant place in the universe where Earth-like planets exist. Maybe they were trying to save the people on Earth. But the wormhole was not stable and as soon as they were created, they collapsed due to quantum effects. Uncertainty principle causes the creation of virtual particles to pop in and out and an influx of extra energy will pinch the throat of the wormhole. To keep the wormhole open, we need negative energy that can produce an anti-gravity effect and push the throat outwards to keep it open. Thorne calculated the values of negative energy required and proposed the first model of what he called a traversable wormhole. 
the presence of negative energy can allow the impossible space-time traveling. Thus, that future civilization had also harnessed the negative matter or exotic matter and used it to stabilize the wormhole. The question of negative energy was solved very much in the 1950s when physicist Hendrik Casimir showed an experiment known as Casimir effect. The effect showed the presence of a particular force associated with the quantum particles known as virtual particles fluctuating in the vacuum due to the uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics. So theoretically, there is presence of exotic particles, but harnessing that particular energy is still out of the scope of modern physics. The team crosses the wormhole and reaches the very first planet filled with water. At first sight, Cooper and team think that there are mountains far away, but slowly they realize that those aren't mountains, but enormously huge waves. Waves in oceans are generated by the tidal force produced by the gravitational pull of the sun and moon. This planet is situated in the orbit of a supermassive black hole called Gargantua. The tidal pull produced by the black hole is so massive that it pulls the ocean surface hundreds of feet in the air. Due to the presence of that planet so close to the black hole, one more phenomenon acts at the same time. It's called gravitational time dilation. Gravity according to general relativity is not a force but curvature of space-time. More massive the object, the more it will distort the fabric of space-time. Thus, a clock will move slower near a heavy object than that of a small object. Due to the enormous size of Gargantua, time dilation is so huge that one hour on Miller's planet is equal to seven years on Earth. Plan doesn't go accordingly and till they return to the main ship, some 23 years on Earth have passed. Murphy and family had grown up and Murphy is now working with Professor Brand on solving an equation that would allow humans to manipulate gravitational force. Manipulation of gravitational force will be required for the sending of a large population of humans to the new planet discovered through a spacecraft. After a debacle on man's planet with the little fuel left, Cooper uses the gravitational force of Gargantua to slingshot and detaches his ship in order to give extra boost to Dr. Brand's ship going towards Edmund's planet. Cooper, along with one of the most loved AI robots, Tars, falls into the black hole and gets transported into a tesseract. What happens inside a black hole, no one knows, but the original plan to transport Cooper to Murphy's bedroom was to be done through another wormhole present at the Singularity. But how can Singularity, where the laws of physics do not hold, allow a wormhole to exist and provide safe passage to someone passing through it? A static black hole will definitely produce a static singularity at its center and at this point, everything will be crushed to a point of nothingness. But when a massive black hole is rotating, then what it produces inside is called ringularity. Physicist Roy Kerr proposed a new solution to Einstein's field equation that showed a model of space around a spherically symmetric object that is rotating. A rotating black hole will produce a ring singularity and the centrifugal force produced due to the angular velocity will provide outward force that will push the space around the singularity and provide a smooth passage similar to the wormhole. But Christopher Nolan does not want the audience to be so much confused around the theoretical aspect of the singularity and since what happens inside a black hole is pretty much prediction, Nolan could definitely apply his artistic freedom and show the event more pleasing to the audience. He opted for the idea of putting a tesseract inside the black hole. This tesseract, later Cooper concludes, has been placed by higher dimensional beings. These beings have managed to access the higher dimensions and thus can manipulate what's happening at a lower three-dimensional stage. As a three-dimensional being, we can easily manipulate what is happening at two-dimensional stages like drawing on paper throughout the length and breadth. Similarly, a being living in the fifth dimension can easily manipulate the happenings at a 3D space or 4D space time. The best example of this can be seen when Dr. Brand took the first handshake when they were cruising through the wormhole. Cooper, when going through the Tesseract and beginning to understand everything going around, comes to the realization that these higher beings are none other than we. 
the humans who have survived somehow and have been sending messages to past civilization so that they can realize how to manipulate gravity and higher dimensions to take whole of humanity still left to the new planet. A tesseract is a four-dimensional analog of a cube and each face of the tesseract is a three-dimensional cube. Cooper is moving in one face of the hypercube. Everything is happening inside the tesseract face and interior portion of the tesseract is the bulk that represents the higher dimension. Thus time as a dimension has been shown physically operating through higher dimension that is bulk. Since every point in space is real, every moment in time is real according to general relativity. We only perceive time moving forward. But moving through the higher dimension, we can access all the real values of time and thus every moment of the life of Murphy when she was young has been shown. Each event in the life of Murphy has been shown as frames in a video file. Cooper, after getting a sense of it, asks TARS to quote the data from black hole into Morse code. This data, which has been the center point of the gravity equation of the professor, has been left a mystery. But Cooper, after getting the data, tries to send it to Murphy by manipulating the gravity and encoding the data through seconds hand in the watch in Murphy's bedroom. This gravity manipulation can be understood through brain cosmology, also known as Randall Sundaram effect produced by physicist Lisa Randall and Raman Sundaram. Brain is a hypothetical object present in the string theory cosmology. Brain can exist at various levels such as 0D brain, 1D brain, 2D and 3D brain. Our 3D universe can be understood as 3D brain. In order to explain why gravity is so weak than other forces, Randall and Sundaram propose that all standard model particles exist on separated brain called weak brain, that is our universe, and all of the graviton, that is hypothetical quantum particle of gravity, is focused near another brain called Planck brain, and higher dimensional space that is bulk present between the two brains is warped due to higher energy near Planck brain and lower energy near weak brain. This nature of bulk between two brains is called anti de sitter space or ADS and this warping is called ADS warping. Due to ADS warping, the bulk distance to Earth becomes small and Tesseract is transported to the Earth. Since Tesseract has each face of three dimensions contained in higher dimensional bulk, that is 4 plus 1, Tesseract can cross 3D face of our world and one face of the Tesseract is parallel to the bedroom of Murphy. Gravity is represented by quantum particle graviton and in string theory, the forced carrier boson is conveyed by a closed string. Thus, gravity can travel between the brains and can be manipulated using gravitational waves flowing from bulk to brain. Murphy understands the code and solves the equation. Tesseract closes down and Cooper is transported near Saturn, where he is picked by the residents living in a rotating cylindrical capsule orbiting the Saturn. Centrifugal force produced due to rotation of the cylinder produces outward force that acts as artificial gravity. Humanity survives and Cooper leaves with Tars to search for Dr. Brand who has started a colony of frozen embryos on the Edmunds planet. This magnum opus is woven in the thread of theoretical physics and human emotion to push the limit for their loved ones. Watch it again and ask as many why as you want. You will be thrilled. What are your thoughts about the concepts shown in this amazing movie? Let us know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, please leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Check out our new Hindi channel from the description below. Do follow us on Instagram for daily quality content that'll make you fall in love with science. Comment down the topics that you want us to cover in our next videos. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific.